Amen. What a privilege it is uh, to be here. Um, we don't get too many opportunities to preach. I've got a big Bible here. <laughs> um, you don't get too many opportunities to preach in a church anymore. It's now a chapel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so to have those opportunities to do this is, is great. Uh, like you said, Carrie, um, and I just thank you so much, Tim and Carrie, for having me come out here and, and preach in this community, in your church. That's, um, last year when I saw you guys as you were riding through, biking through the state of Kansas, and you came through the Fort Riley, Manhattan area, I said, hey, I'm coming through. Hey, can we, can we meet up? And uh, we were able to do that, have some lunch together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you fixed your bike or something in a small little town of Ogden or something, something, something like that. But um, I said, hey, what, what about next year? Can you come out to our, our church for Memorial Day service? And uh, at that time, I didn't know what was going on because we were ready to deploy last year. Uh, went out to Kuwait, and it was when all that ISIS stuff was breaking out uh, around that June time frame, June, July. And so we got over there, and we, we didn't quite anticipate what was going up north, about 500 miles across the border. Uh, but thank God, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't to be that we had to go in and do anything like that. But there was just all those uncertainties. Am I coming back at the, the scheduled time within nine months or so? Or would it be there 12, 15 months and work on, through a war? But uh, thank God I was able to come back. Amen. So I deployed, uh, redeployed back here to, the, uh, to Fort Riley back in March, and we went on leave, and uh, had surgery on my shoulder, so if I favor this, this shoulder a little bit, uh, it's just because I got that done about four weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, just need to get done, it's, it's fine, it's not like a, a purple heart or anything like that, it's just <laughs> one of those football injuries, you know, it was actually tri- high school in Trinity Bible College, where I played football, and it just lost my shoulder, I had to pick it up off the ground and, and put it back on, so it was, it's fine, it's okay. The Army saw fit to, to bring me in. I do want to introduce my wife to, to the church community. It's my wife, Carissa Hunefeld. We've been married for almost 10 years now, wow. in July. And uh, we, we met at, at Trinity Bible College. And I would have to cr- credit Tim and Carrie. I probably would have never, ever conceived going to North Dakota to Trinity Bible College, Ellendale, of 1,500, probably about half the size of this community, uh, with a, a population of about... When I went, it was almost about 300 students. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> to graduate from high school, move up to Alaska, where my parents moved after Goldendale, Washington, and uh, just, just kind of finding my place in this world, as Michael W. Smith would have said, um, <laughs> or face in this world, is that what he's saying? Something, finding my face. It was, it was within those two or three years that the Lord really was, was stirring in my heart a call of ministry, uh, having worked with another youth pastor who, who really just kind of took me under his wings and, and, and showed, me, showed me what right looked like. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was looking for Bible colleges, it, uh, I was looking at Northwest out in Seattle because I wanted to go back to, to Washington State. Um, Southwestern, Assembly God University down in, in Waxahachie, Waxahachie, Texas. And then my dad said, what about Ellendale, North Dakota? Dad, there's, you know, trees. <laughs> you know, it's flat. <laughs> No ocean, you know. <laughs> but um, I remember praying about it and felt so convinced. And it was really based upon what my dad had, had talked to me about with, with Tim and Carrie. You know, Tim went there, Carrie went there. It seemed like a good place. Uh, praying about it and just talking to people. Um, it really just kind of fostered that idea. So <coughs> Ellendale met my wife after, uh, after graduating. We got married ministered in Bismarck, North Dakota as a youth pastor for about two, three, two years, and then went to seminary, and here, here God called me into to ministry as an army chaplain. So we've been doing this for uh, two and a half years, it'll be three years in November, and we'll see what the Lord has for us as, as the years continue on. But yes, there are uh, Christian Assembly God chaplains in the military, Amen. and they, they do uh, represent, um, they represent the cross very, very well. Keep praying for our soldiers. Keep praying for our chaplains. There are real struggles that we go through. Uh, Nobody's telling us what we have to do yet. Uh, But you never know what could happen in 5, 10, or 15 years. Uh, I just know my wife and I, we're we're just prepared however the Lord sees fit. Um, But right now we can... We can preach in the name of Jesus. We can pray in the name of Jesus. And we can, we can live and abide by our faith and our values. So just keep praying for that yes. as well. So enough of that. 
Um, when you think of um, Memorial Day weekend, what, what comes to your mind? You know, may, maybe if you look behind me, you see the American flags, and you see a, a guy in a military uniform, and you, you think, yeah, it's about, about the military. It's about m memorializing those who have gone to battle and have fought and, and paid the final sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But if, if we, we were to be honest with ourselves, when you think of Memorial Day weekend, maybe a few days ago, maybe in your, earlier this week, maybe most of our thoughts were surrounded about, oh, I have another day off at work. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe I have that vacation plan. Maybe I, maybe I can go camping or fishing. Maybe it's barbecues in the backyard with the family. Maybe for some who, have, who are still going to school or we're going to school. I know in the Manhattan area, people are out of school now. But maybe it's that first full week that you don't have to go back to school. Maybe that's kind of what most of us think of Memorial Day. You know, in, being in the military, uh, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and all, all those other days, they... They have a significance for us as military personnel, but I can't say that that was always the case for me, even before I joined the military. It was one of those things where Memorial Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, all those days that we take as federal holidays, we just kind of like, I, I get it, I respect it superficially, but it doesn't, it, there's nothing about internally that, that really signifies anything for me. I, I had a grandfather who, who fought in World War II get that, you know, he, he went to North Africa, Battle of the Bulge, and even saw some of the concentration camps in Germany. Uh, he, he passed away about seven years ago. But even then, we, we didn't really talk about it. We didn't talk about the military and what it was about the sacrifice. And so, so coming into this, this service today and, and recognizing what Memorial Day is all about, there's some things that I, I think that the Lord has really put in the place of our hearts and also the place of his, his people and the Israelites in the Old Testament, and even for Christians today. You know, I think about in the Old Testament where God would um, teach or basically memorialize certain things for the Israelites to bring out in memory. And before I get going, do you mind if I take off this coat? I just look a little too formal, okay? Um, I don't normally dress like this, but it is Memorial Day, right? So I should look like something other than just a... A guy up the street. Um, but when you look in the Old Testament, you see how... Excuse me. You might hold this for a second. Yeah, I need my wife. Um, oh, that feels better. You see how, how God has, has instructed certain things within the Old Testament. Specifically, when you look at Genesis, when he created the heavens and the earth, and created the world and everything, on that very seventh day, what did he do? He took a break. He took a Sabbath. And that was supposed to be now something memorialized for the Israelites as they were coming out of Egypt to memorialize that day, that day that God rested. Six days you work, seventh day you rest. We also look when in Exodus, when the children are still in Egypt, what did God do that was so, so purposeful? Something that was supposed to be memorialized. And it was Passover. Mm -hmm. Where he says, this is now going to be something that you're going to teach generation to de generation. A statute for all those raised up. That this will be something that you will be memorialized forever. Mm -hmm. Passover. We do that now with the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. You look also in Joshua chapter 4. Whereas the Israelites were ready to cross into the promised land. They crossed over to, uh, across the Jordan River on dry land. And Joshua said, pick up 12 stones and set up as a boundary marker. Mm -hmm. So that when your kids see those boundary stones, they'll say, what, what is it all about? And you can now recite to them what, what, what God did for you. That we crossed on, on dry ground into the promised land. So there's things in the Old Testament that, that God did for the Israelites to remember. We look at, even in the New Testament, we think of things like the Lord's Supper is definitely something that we, we, we remember. Yeah. It's something that God has placed for us to always remember the sacrifice. There's things that we also do. We do things like Easter and Christmas. Sometimes we kind of kind of trivialize some of this stuff. You know, you look at maybe some of the high church and traditions like the Catholics, Orthodox, Lutherans. They go through Ash Wednesdays and Lent. They celebrate every week as some, some saint, you know, St. George, St. Francis, St. Boniface. You're like, what in the world? I, I sit with some of these chaplains who are different faith groups. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, today is going to be the holy 
uh, sainthood of George this week, and we're celebrating. I'm like, wow, I mean, we don't do that. <laughs> Not in Assembly God Church. You know, we don't have a whole lot of tradition that really carries us through. And it's not bad. You know, Ash Wednesday's not bad. Lent is not bad. It doesn't say it in the Bible, but it's good to memorize and memorialize those things that we do. Yeah. And so, when we look at the, in the New Testament, I, I think there's one real precedent that, that God has laid out for us that we should memorialize, and that is the Lord's Supper. Yes. It's the only thing that he says to us to remember. If you, if you open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we see Paul writing in, in this chapter. He says in verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You see that? There's two words there that I think strike more and more than any other word here within these verses. For Memorial Day, and I, I think it's that word remembrance. Yes. Yes. See, we in the military, we, we do some pretty, pretty spectacular things when it comes to memorial services, memorial ceremonies. In the in the military, we call it a dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. Basically, get get your dress blues and look good, and make sure that everything is squared away. But during those memorial ceremonies, when when a soldier has passed away or a veteran has passed away, we do some very specific things perfection, executed well. Mm -hmm. Everything is supposed to be as, as perfect and without error as possible. And we do that very well because we do it to honor the soldier, honor the families mm -hmm. yeah. of that soldier who has laid their life down for us or has passed along. And our aim is to respect and honor the service of that soldier. And we do it first. And here's kind of the three points that we're going to be talking about today. To remember his life. Yes. To mourn the loss and to thank him for his sacrifice. And I think if we're honest with ourselves and we look at what Christ has done on the cross and what he did as he brought his disciples together for that last supper, he did this so that we would remember his life, that we mourn his loss because of the suffering that he went through on the cross, but that we'd be grateful for his sacrifice. And those are kind of the three points I want to talk about today. So remembering his life, if you ever lost a loved one, you know that one of the most powerful ways to help in the healing process of grief is to remember the life of the one who passed. Yes. Amen. We, we try to recall the memories that brought us close to that individual. We try to remember maybe some of the physical characteristics that, that brought us close to that person. But sometimes, even after you've lost a loved one, some of those, those memories kind of pass away. You try to remember that smile, maybe kind of that, that, that twitch that they had on their face. Maybe a laugh that they had, or maybe even the, the fragrance of perfume or cologne that they used to wear. But there's one thing that we don't ever forget about the person that passed along. It's usually their personality. It's usually the character. It's usually how they, they interacted with people around them. Those are the things that we always remember. Man, I, I just can't remember what, what they looked like or what they said or their voice. Some of that's just kind of passing away. But I remember this. I remember my great-grandfather. Hunefeld. He died at 103 years of age. He taught Sunday school till he was 98. And I remember him as a man of prayer. A man of prayer. And that comes mainly off of the coattails of what my dad was, was telling me about, about great-grandfather. But anytime you talk to him, you think, huh? What? Huh? And his, his glasses were as thick as Coke bottles. And, and he couldn't hear very well. And he, and he couldn't really recite too much about the stories of his life and everything. But what came to his memory was, hey, Dad, hey Grandpa, can, can you pray for us? Yes. Boom, right away. Yes. Amen. And so he's a great patriarch that I always remember. See, in the military, when we conduct a memorial ceremony, it's more for those in attendance, such as the family and the soldiers of the unit. It's not so much about the person who's in the casket mm -hmm. or even in the grave. Yeah. And it's, it's, not, it's not that we don't honor them or respect them, but it's more for those who are watching. Mm -hmm. 
Because it, in any situation, regardless of how that soldier lived, even how they died, we always want to honor them. Mm -hmm. Even a soldier who has committed suicide, we honor them. We honor their memory. We honor their service. The only time that we don't give military honors to a soldier is if they've done something criminal. Because we don't want to miscue what they've done in the service, if that was a year or, several, or just a few months or 20 years. We want to remember the service as they were as a soldier, not the few hours or moments of their life in making a decision. So in anything that we do within a funeral or memorial ceremony, we always want to honor them and honor the family that, that allowed their soldier, their, their man or, or woman, or their son or daughter, to serve for this country. We don't have the same luxury as disciples to know what Jesus looked like, what he ate, what he laughed at, or anything like that. But we know through the scriptures we read and what he had said. Obviously, you know, we know that there wasn't anything that, that hindered Jesus from loving people, all people, regardless mm -hmm. of race, sex, creed, or whatever religion. Yes. He lived a sinless and perfect life and spoke the truth because he was the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. He also provided for us an example in which he, he grabbed his disciples around and he washed their feet. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, follow my example. Mm -hmm. There's no other person in the world who's affected history more than who Jesus is. More monuments and buildings, paintings, books, poems, essays, whatever you want. If you compile all the things that Jesus did, I, there's more stuff on Jesus than many of the, the most popular historical figures combined. Mm -hmm. Jesus did something, but it wasn't for, for his own benefit. He didn't do it to get wealth or popularity or be prosperous or anything. He did it because he loved God and he loved people. Yeah. He wanted to reach God and do God's purpose. And in that purpose and in that mission to reach man, mm -hmm. to reconcile him back to God, the Father. He was passionate about God and his mission. He depended on God through prayer and upon the truth of Scripture and by submitting to God's will, even at the cost of his life. For even the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. And it's for the life he lived to redeem man to God that we remember Jesus through communion, the Lord suffered through his sacrifice on the cross. It is a memorial to the life he lived while on this earth and a legacy that it left us to pass along to those around us. So we remember his life. The second thing is, is mourning the loss. You know, I've officiated and, and attended a number of, of funerals and memorial service ceremonies. And I've never been in a funeral where there weren't tears shed. Because it's a natural human response to grieve for the person that is lost. To feel that you're never going to see that person on this, on this earth. That they've breathed their last. That you go back into your home, you're not going to see them standing around in the kitchen. You're not going to be able to nestle up against them in the bed and feel their warmth of their body. You're not going to have a child that comes through that door and say, Hey, Mom, hey, Dad, I'm here for Christmas or, or Thanksgiving. There is that loss. And it's hard. It's a hard emotion. And I've had the unfortunate responsibility to go knock on a door with another soldier next to me and tell that spouse, I'm sorry, your, your husband is dead. You know, it, it's never a good time. It's always ill-conceived. It's usually during the night, mm -hmm. like at 9 or 10 o'clock at night when people are getting ready to go to bed. That's what it seems anyway. And you start walking up, and you're in full military uniform. You knock on that door. The spouse opens up the door and gives you that blank stare, like, what's going on? Or, why are you here? Where's my husband? And you have to give them that, that unfortunate news. Your, your husband has passed. He's dead. And then all those, those feelings of doubt, no, 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 despair, what, what am I going to do now? And complete defeat. I can't, I can't make it anymore. And as a chaplain, you always struggle. You always try to go through this routine of things maybe you should say, or what, what you should do, and there's never a good way of saying it. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse when, when you know that that person is, is not a believer. Yeah. What do you say when they don't have faith? Yes. 
The best thing I can do and, and what I have done is just weep with them who will weep. That's right. Amen. To listen actively, to share as, as much as I can, um, you know, cherishingly to them. Mm. To give them a pat on the, on the, on the back and, and bring them close and listen and, and give them a, pa a patient response. Mm. You know, you think about the disciples on the night that Jesus was betrayed and crucified. What loss. Yes. What yes. absolute defeat. All of them running away. Mm -hmm. One of them is just complete denial of who, who knowing that guy. <laughs> what all of them shared was a mixture of grief, of loss, disappointment, but their grief would be short-lived. Yes. Within only a few days, yes. within a few days from that time, Hallelujah. you have these two women carrying spices going to the tomb, and then all of a sudden see two men in gleaming clothes and saying, uh -huh. why are you looking for the living among the dead. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is not here. He has risen. Hallelujah. Is that amazing? It is. Amazing. It was in those three days, though, that they were just lost. They were scattered. I just thank God, though, that we do have a living Savior. Yes. We have one who died for our sins, who conquered death, hell, and the grave. Our mourning has turned into gladness. We can say with King David that you have turned my wailing into dancing. Hallelujah. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. See, part of the remembering the Lord through communion is to mourn over his suffering, the agony of the cross. Mm -hmm. It is. But we rejoice for his victory over the grave. Hallelujah. If he did not rise from the dead, we would still be in mourning. We would still be in grief. We would still be lost without a Savior. Yes. But thank God that he came, that he, he conquered yes. the sin that condemned us. Mm -hmm. Thank God that our grief in, this, in his death pales in comparison to our joy in his resurrection. Hallelujah. So we remember his life. We mourn the loss, the agony, the suffering on that cross. But we're also grateful for his sacrifice. And this is the third point. On Memorial Day, the thing that we feel most is gratitude for those who gave their lives for this country. See, there are no words that quite express the magnitude we feel for those who have gone in harm's way. To fight evil, injustice, and everything else that is just... Mm -hmm. Not good in this world. Yes. You know, we haven't always agreed on what we fight for and what wars we fight and how we should fight it and all that stuff. I get it. Be Democrat, Republican, you know, North, South, East, or West. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. We all have different opinions. Even in this small room here, we probably have different, different opinions on how we should be fighting this or that and solving the world's problems. But you know, one thing that we agree on, though, is every soldier who's passed... We, we do respect and honor them for their service, mm -hmm. regardless of how it happened. And it's, it's unfortunate to, to see that the decisions that are made up at, uh, up at the White House and, and, and some of the other decisions that are made within political spheres is affecting people. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But we do remember the people who are trying to do the right thing, yes, that's right. who are given order to go and execute, and they do that to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. See, I saw a bumper sticker a few days ago that said, a hero doesn't wear a cape, but he wears dog tags. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, that's, that's a neat saying. Because we kind of mythalize, or, or, or what, that's not the right word, we kind of bring into myth all the things that you know, Superman and Batman and Spider-Man and all these other Avengers can do but it's, it's all just on the big screen. It's all on the pages of a comic book. But when you see a soldier who is actually fighting the battle, that's amazing to think about. I haven't had, thank God, I haven't had the opportunity to go fight in a war to see soldiers wounded or killed. I'm glad I haven't had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. It may come in the future. I, I pray it doesn't. But mm -hmm. things have happened in the military. It seems like we're, we're at a war every, every 10 or 15, 20 years, you know. Um, but that person who is who's joined the army, he stares death in the face mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of that verse in John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this. They lay down his life for his friends. See, soldiers don't know you, and most of you don't know who they will ever be. Maybe you'll see a, a picture of them on the news or hear about their name on the radio or something like that. But they're doing things 
you know, without, without everyone knowing who they are. Yeah. Just kind of unanimous type of, type of thing. I can't tell you how proud I am to talk to some of them. And some of them are, are going in for, you know, their own personal desires. You know, yeah, I just need to get a job and get out of that town. Okay? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, I just want to get the GI Bill so I can go to college and get a real job. Okay, fine, you know. But some of them have really joined to fight for the American freedom, the American ideal of life. And when I hear that from them, I'm like, wow, that's, that's amazing. To actually be willing to sacrifice your life, lay down your life for our ideals in America. I think of Jesus who did know the type of people we would be. And yet he willingly went to the cross, laid down his life. For us, Amen. knowing that we're evil, that we're sinful, yes. that we're already condemned, that we're already going to reject him and come back and fall in, in sin again and come back. But yet his, his arms are always wide open to yes. receive us. Amen. Romans 5, 7, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous sin, <coughs> though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us while we were still sinners, yet yes. sinners. 2,000 years ago, he knew we were going to sin. Mm -hmm. He still decided to die for us. Yes. How grateful to him are we that Christ came to our rescue. Mm -hmm. He loved us enough in our wretched state to reconcile us back to the Father. Yeah. The Lord's Supper and, and his, his time on the cross and the grave is an opportunity to thank Jesus Christ for taking our punishment mm -hmm. and making us in right standing, righteous in God's mm -hmm. sight. Yes. There's only two defining forces have ever offered to die for you. Mm -hmm. To be the American soldier who is laying down his life to fight for the freedoms we know in America. And Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who had fought and conquered so that you may have spiritual freedom. Yes. So I, I'd hope that uh, in conclusion, that on this Memorial Day, I hope that we do remember, that we take a moment to, to remember our soldiers, mm -hmm. our servicemen and women who laid down their life for us. But most importantly, I would hope that, and pray that every time, whether that's once a month, the first Sunday of every month that you take communion, or if you do it every Sunday, or like some other churches, that we'd always remember, remember Jesus' life. Hallelujah. That we'd mourn over the death and the agony on that cross. But turn around and be grateful. Yeah. For the thing that he did by conquering and being victorious yes. from death. Okay. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much for this opportunity, uh, Pastor Tim. I don't